Alrighty, I think today, or tonight, might be part of my uh, custom build for a, uh, a second gear shift. Well, the problem with the Cherokee uh, shift selector is that the uh, first and second gears are together. So when you throw it in the first second, you can't really choose between the two. The transmission decides for you. And uh, sometimes that's not a good thing. So what I'd like to do is add um, a switch so that I can manually decide between first or second. Or th this setup would basically allow me to activate second whenever I wanted. It wouldn't really affect first gear. And I'll show you how that's done. Down here, the, uh, the AW4 automatic transmission that almost every single automatic Cherokee came with is controlled by two solenoids. So you got solenoid 1 and solenoid 2. And depending on which one is on or off, uh, decides on the gear that you're in. So for first gear, this one's on, this one's off. For second gear, this one's on, and then this one turns on. And that's what shifts it to second. When you go into third, the first one shuts off, and the other one stays on. And then for overdrive, they both turn off. So with the way that this layout is set up in first gear, so when you shift it into first, solenoid one comes on. And then if you want to go into second gear at any time, all you got to do is turn solenoid two on, and it'll shift it into second, because the way that the solenoids work. And it's actually quite simple. And you can do this both both directions. If you wanted to always stay in first gear, uh, you can do this, where um, on the transmission computer, which is laying underneath of that dash panel, which I'll show you later, um, the connector C15 out of the transmission computer, uh, if you were to add a switch to cut the power to that, um, to solenoid 2, then you could always keep it in first, or always in overdrive. Because the, the, the way that this shifts, um, you apply positive power to C15, and that's what activates solenoid 2. So if you're cutting the power from that, you it'll never go into second. Uh, for the one that I'm going to do, though, to allow it to switch into second manually, um, you'll take power from D16, that's just the positive uh, cable that goes into the transmission computer. You can use any positive cable if you like, this is just at the computer, so it's a little easier. Uh, you would take power from that, and put it into C15, and you would use a diode, because it may or may not be true, it might not matter, but a lot of people say that maybe uh, flowing positive back the other way into the computer might damage stuff, so the diode's just there for safety. It's a 50 cent part, it's not that big, so might as well add it. So all you're doing is jumping this wire to uh, shift into second. And that's pretty much it. So. My switch of choice is going to be this guy right here. This is actually a stock uh, Cherokee switch for uh, the wiper and wash mode. And why I chose this is because it's got two different modes. It has the on mode that you have to hold it, or it has the on mode where it stays on. So you could do it either or. If you're trying to do a quick, uh, quick uh, shifting, if you're just trying to like race someone in traffic or whatever, you could just sit there, throw it into first, and then when you need it, go into second, and then let off when you don't need it. Um, or, if you're trying to hold it, if you're off-roading or something, and you don't feel like keeping your hand on the shifter the whole time, you just leave it in second like that. You could do it either way. And the way this is all set up, I think I'm going to mount my switch somewhere right about there. I don't know if I want it flat, or if I want it like this, but it feels very comfortable in that position. So... If we come in over here, if you notice, um, C15 controls solenoid 2. That's the one that we care about. So we're just trying to feed a positive signal to that. And if you go up here, uh, you have two different positives. You have D14, which goes directly to the battery, and D16, which is uh, it's a fused link that's also connected to the ignition. And the reason we're taking D16 is one for the fuse, and two, we don't really need our, shift, uh, our switch to work if... Um, the engine isn't running, so you wouldn't want to flip that switch and like, you know, have your transmission do things while the car is off. That wouldn't be nice. So that's the that's what it looks like in a diagram, and here's the actual connector. So this is all that important information that you like to know. So if you notice the one we need, C15, all the way at to the top right, um, one over, that'll be the one that we're looking for. And it should be a purple and white wire. 
So, let's go find our purple white wire. Alright, so out of this uh, assorted rectifier diode pack that I got from Radio Shack, it was a couple bucks, it comes with a, an assortment of different diodes that you need. If you can find one, and that's all you want is one, then go ahead and buy it. But I might find other uses for this. They all look pretty similar, but if you look really close here, there is labeling on it. So this is the IN4001, which I believe this is good to 50 volts. And the one that uh, I saw online, they recommended the, the IN4002. And that goes up to 100 volts. I don't know why they recommended the 2 over the 1. Um, because the maximum running voltage that the other diode can take is 50 volts, and the transmission computer only does 12. So that's way within the limits. So you can use the 1 or the 2. They're the same size. They basically do the same exact thing. Um, I don't know the wattage that they take. It's not a whole lot, but... And then just remember your silver band. So that silver band uh, tells you which way you should apply it. I'm pretty sure that the, um, oh, they're all 1 amp diodes, that's what they are. The silver band is the forward current, so current can't go from this way back, but it can go this way forward, I think, if I'm reading this diagram correctly. So, that's the way, and what we're going to do. Alrighty, with your lower dash panel removed, here you can see your transmission control unit, or whatever the hell you'd like to call it. So, uh, you know, just a little box, 12 volt, AW4 computer. So, here's your wiring harness right here. So all you're going to do is take current from the yellow wire and apply it to that purple white wire. Uh, and you're going to put the diode between the purple white wire and your new wire to make sure that you're not feeding uh, current back into the computer. And that's it. So for this, again, we got the diode. And uh, I still got some leftover extension cord, which has uh, some decent gauge wire. You know, this isn't a really high amperage uh, circuit or anything, but <clears throat> it's a good way to have some nice wire. So I'm going to take two of the wires out and run them from the computer down there and into the, the shifter. So, time to do things. Alright. With this removed, you can see it a, lo a lot better now. Don't get confused between the two colors. There is a blue one and then there is a purple one, and they're right next to each other. The blue one, I believe, is solenoid 1, and the purple solenoid 2. I am pretty sure it's how it's set up. So, make sure it's the purple one, not the blue one, or you'll have unexpected results. Okay. To give you a more visual representation of what's going on here, as you'll notice, cut the uh, purple and white wire, violet, whatever you'd like to call it, and uh, my power wire, or my supply wire, I guess I should say, is uh, going to be green. So I've twisted the green and the output purple together along with the diode. And notice which way the diode is facing. The silver is facing out. The power goes in the black and out the gray. The gray does not go back to the black. So you put the diode here and then the other lead of the diode right here, this is going to get connected back to the purple. All right, you have to put it in this order. If you put the green on the other side of the diode, then the diode effectively does nothing. Alright, that's how this goes down. Now my other wire of choice, um, I think it's going to be white. Because when you see a black wire, you usually think of ground. So it would be bad if you found out that that ground was actually positive. So I'm going to go white for the positive. So, let's do a little solder job. Alright, fair warning right here. Um, that yellow wire is a positive wire. It's not a live wire currently because it would be hooked up to the uh, ignition but uh just in case you know this would be a good time to disconnect your positive cable but since i know where this wire runs and that it's disconnected at the other end this fuse holder um controls that yellow wire so with that fuse disconnected even if that was getting power this side will not get power so you know be careful when you do this because if you go cutting into that wire and your scissors are touching something that grounds, you'll short something, make a spark, you know, dangerous stuff. Alright, here we have our finished product on the, uh, the computer end. So, there we have it. Our yellow wire, which has the white wire spliced into it. 
and our purple white wire which has the diode and the green wire spliced into it. And then to make all this junk work, you just connect your green and your white together. And there you go. Alright, so I'm going to plug this back into the computer, uh, put that, um, that fuse back in, and then I'll run the wires around the dash and fancy magic. Alright, with everything screwed back together again, cleaned up and all that nice stuff, here is um, the last step. So what I got, I have my wire running back behind this little bracket right here, so that it just sits there, because it's going to sit in front. Um, doing some measurements on like the plastic uh, that this thing cuts around. There's more room at the, the front at full bottom than there is at the top at full top. So with this setup, you can shift through everything. And the wires don't get hung up on here because they float back because I don't want them to get hooked up in that ratcheting system. That would be not good. So, that's what we got so far. Alright, here we are back inside. So, here's our shifter. Had a hell of a time tracking down the hot glue gun. But this is what we got. Sorry for the crap job, but I was on my last glue stick, so I had to push it down with a pen. Not the most accurate way to do it. Now, if you notice over here, I trimmed up the, the switch a little bit. The prong all the way in the back, right there, I cut off and bent out of the way. Because if you notice, when they were sticking up originally, they wouldn't fit where I wanted it to. So I bent uh, these two down. I left this one where it was, and I cut that one off because it's not needed because both the middle ones are grounds they're both connected together so you don't need both of them so I bent them down and now we have a really nice fitment it lines up nicely with the other switch so your thumb doesn't have to move that far so I think it'll work all right there we are Final setup. I think I'm going to wrap some black tape around it just to make it look a little nicer. But there you go. That's what I'm looking for. So, how does this work? Sit in a stoplight, someone's looking at you funny, you got to go fast. You got to go sonic fast. Pop into first. Light goes green. You fucking good. There you go. Or if you want to keep it in second or third, this could be an overdrive kill as well. If you're in drive, just do that and it'll pop into third. So, there you go. Cool fucking shit. Yeah, buddy. A little electrical tape cleans it up a little bit. Makes it look not so shitty. Get the Jeep, baby. Yeah. So, first off, throw it in D. See if we properly work. Thank you. 